even with the proper tools, skills, and materials. Each time a violin maker reaches up for a piece of spruce from the ceiling and begins carving, the chance of making a true master violin without knowing the secrets of Stradivarius and Guarnerius is the same as rolling seven or eleven a hundred times in a row. It's amazing how flexible the belly of a master violin really is. And even though the thickness of Stradivarius and Guarnerius bellies aren't consistent, most authorities have believed that their goal was to carve them to an even thickness, with the possible exception of slightly thicker in the center, especially around the F holes and the sound post area. They explain that any variations are due to a lack of skill or patience. Can you even begin to imagine that the same Master Luthier who created this work of art didn't have the patience to carve the thickness of his bellies more evenly? The secret of Antonio Stradivari and Joseph Guarneri was not to carve the wood to an exact measurement or pattern, but to carve each piece of wood the best way for that piece of wood and this is proven out in over a hundred instruments that still retain their original graduations. The truth is that no matter how high the quality or evenness of the grain, every tree is unique. Not only do the trees live their own lives in their own way, the north side of each tree is far less suited for making master violins than the south side. And no matter how beautiful and seemingly perfect the wood may appear on the surface, every piece will vary on the inside as well. The secret is to understand this and then bring out the full potential of each piece of wood. The most valuable trees are the ones that grow the most consistently. The reason is that if the outline and the arching match each other, they should be able to be graduated with an even thickness all over, usually around 2.6 millimeters. But there is a catch, because even with seemingly perfect wood, the odds of creating a master violin is still a million to one without this next secret, which is, if the wood is heavier, it needs to be carved thinner, maybe 2.4 or even 2.3 millimeters, as many Stradivarius and Guarneris are. Or, if the wood is lighter, it might need to be carved as thick as 2.9 millimeters, and on rare occasions, even thicker. But wait, there is a catch, because no matter how perfect that slightly heavier or lighter piece of wood may appear on the outside, it will always vary from place to place on the inside, sometimes not very much like this one, yet other times more than you can possibly imagine, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because many of Stradivari's finest concert instruments vary the most. The best way to see what's going on before the belly is varnished is with light. In fact, it's the varnish of Stradivarius and Guarnerius that has kept this secret hidden for so long. Sunlight worked for the old masters, but I prefer to see and carve at the same time, so I use this. The secret is to carve the belly evenly, but slightly thicker at first, and then carve the darker, more dense areas just a little thinner. You don't usually need to remove enough wood to even the color out, usually just about halfway. 
and never go so far as to create any drastic waves or divots, just a mellow blending. The amazing part is that after just a couple violins, you'll discover that your bellies will begin to look a lot more like and sound a lot more like Stradivarius and Guanarius. But wait, there's more, especially since trees with absolutely perfect grain are all but impossible to find, as Stradivari himself can attest to. The secret here is that perfect trees aren't necessarily better, especially for customers willing to trade just a little bit of boom in the concert hall for a lot more flavor, like this customer. The secret of carving grain that doesn't follow the rules is that the finer the grain, the stronger the wood. So if there's finer grain in the cheeks or bouts, like in so many Stradivaries, slightly compensate by carving these areas a little thinner in proportion to the center. Not too much, and even though Stradivarius went as thin as 1.6 millimeters upon occasion, until you have the same kind of wood that he had, and the experience to judge it properly, don't go thinner than 2.1 millimeters no matter what you're compensating for. You may even want to consider starting over with another piece of wood. And once again, no abrupt divots or valleys. But wait, there's more, because even though these are the most important secrets about carving the spruce, this rabbit hole goes much deeper. And, when making a master violin, never forget that every customer has different needs, tastes, and desires. Stradivarius and Guanarius were truly brilliant, especially for their time, and both deserve their places in history, because while using these secrets to compensate for the density and the grain of the wood, they sometimes would also change the outline of the instrument by creating a new mold, or by using a previous mold that they hadn't used in years and or modifying the F-holes or sound openings, which they did many times. The sad part is that this has proven to be a point of confusion when dealers try to determine what year an instrument was really made and why some have actually pulled out original Stradivarius and Guanarius labels that were correct so they could put in reproductions with another date. The masters weren't perfect, and they both were known to experiment, but everything that the masters did was on purpose. Making hundreds of master instruments one after the other was not luck. They were not mere craftsmen either, like others making furniture down the street as many have claimed. They knew that they were creating visual and acoustical works of art that would be played upon and cherished for hundreds of years. The true emotions, or what some refer to as the soul of the instrument, only comes about if you listen to the wood and get to know it personally. How it actually moves while you're carving it to thickness. Finding out how hard the grain really is by digging your fingernails into the surface. And then caressing that surface with scrapers 
to let it know that you really care. <laughs> All right. And yet, I will always be the only living violin maker ever certified and appraised by the greatest connoisseur who ever lived, Jacques Francais, who bought, sold, and loved more Stradivari and Guarneri violins than anyone. But wait, there really is one more secret, because even if you compensate for the density and grain of the wood and experiment with all the different forms and archings of Stradivarius and Guarnerius, the odds of your violin belly satisfying the dreams of any concert violinist are still at least 10 to 1. Realize that there are many instruments made by Stradivarius and Guarnerius that seem to follow all of these secrets, then throw everything to the wind by making one side of the instrument half a millimeter thicker or thinner than the other. A perfect example of this is the Baltic, made by Joseph Guarneri del Gesù in 1731. It goes up for auction next week at Teresio's. And even though I haven't visited with the instrument for many years, I do recall that the thickness of the belly is fairly uneven from side to side. And at the same time, it's a fabulous instrument, well worth the $10 million estimate. So what is the last missing secret? There are so few that realize that even though they did make them smaller than we do today, Stradivarius and Guarnerius varied the shape, size, and weight of the bass bars quite drastically in order to give their instruments unique voices or to compensate for the two different pieces of wood, especially when using two completely different trees for the belly. Because of this, when most of the necks and bass bars were replaced in the 1800s, many Stradivarius and Guarnerius violins lost their original voices because the bellies were regraduated instead of having a different size and weight of bass bar uniquely fitted to them. Sadly, because of this, it's not that uncommon for a Stradivarius or Guarnerius violin to have had its belly removed and regraduated as many as six times, and still not be quite as magical as it once was. When it comes to the violins of Stradivarius and Guarnerius, the answer has been the same for over 300 years. Is it possible to ever get lucky and make instruments like theirs without knowing and applying the secrets? No. <laughs>